Hey guys, Alex Man here. So, what am I working on today? Well, today I'm working on the Forerunner. There she is, all shiny and gray. And uh, we're going to be putting a fuel pump in it. So, uh, show what I got, show what we got to do. So, from Rock Auto, I got myself a genuine Denso pump and sock. That's unrelated. And I got myself a uh, Dorman uh, gasket for the uh, fuel pump assembly. So there's a part number for that. It's a Dorman part number. And the Denso part number is there. That's the uh, pump and the sock. And uh, it looks like it's a pretty comprehensive kit. We got a uh, nice little instruction manual of Denso parts you can come with. Some fittings and such. Sock, filter and the pump itself. Alright, so here's what you're going to need if you want to do this job. You're going to need uh, some rags, grip towels, whatever, WD-40, PB blaster, some lubricant of some sort, cleaner, uh, some more lubes, so that's some grease there, Phillips and flat screwdrivers, uh, 14 and 19 millimeter end wrenches, well, uh, flare wrenches preferably, something to cut hose with, some pliers, something to clean with, 7 and 8 millimeter sockets, and uh, Oh, you need two of these. Okay, so before we open up the uh, fuel system, we want to depressurize it because it's, uh, well, in theory, if everything's working well, which it might not be necessary for me, but uh, it'll have residual pressure in there, about 30-something pounds or whatever it's supposed to be. So to relieve that, what we're going to do is um, you can either uh, remove, unplug the fuel pump and try to start the truck, or it's a little bit simpler to, I mean, you're going to have to do it either way, I guess. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the airflow meter and start the truck. It'll run for a second and die because it can't run. Fuel pump doesn't run without the airflow meter. Ta da! So, you heard of that? So, I'm just going to plug this back in. As long as I don't start it, we'll be good. I just don't want to forget it later. So, on the pickups, you can either remove the bed or drop the tank. On the four owners, we have it easier because we're lucky, I guess. Back here, underneath the seat, is an access cover. Right there. So there's just a couple of Phillips screws, and then we can take the cover off. So to make things easy, I could remove this seat, but uh, I'm lazy, so I do it the hard way. It's counterintuitive. That's kind of how it works out most times. So if memory serves, this is also stuck down there pretty good with uh, some strip caulk, so uh, it might be hard to pry it off. So I got myself a few flat screwdrivers here to kind of help it out. There she comes. Not too bad. All right. So we need to disconnect this fitting here, drain vent, and obviously uh, disconnect the electrical connection to the pump. Okay, so here we are in the back of the truck looking back at the back of the tank. Uh, there you can see the two plugs. The flat plug, with the flatter plug, the oval plug, that's for the fuel level sender. The other plug there, that's the one for the fuel pump. And uh, you can also tell it's only got two wires, the other one's got three. Um, these wires are heavier duty and the ones for the sender are lighter duty, lighter gauge. So uh, we're going to disconnect the round plug there, which is for the fuel pump. Alrighty, let's fish this wire all the way out. Okay, so now we know that's clear. Now we're ready to disconnect the uh, actual pressurized fuel line here. So we'll get a couple of line wrenches and get ready to do that. Alright, so we've got a 14 millimeter and a 19 millimeter. And uh, flare wrenches are best used here. Uh, you want to be very careful here because um, it's very easy to break this fitting off where it goes into the tank. Uh, I've read some stories about people who have done that in there. They never seem to be too pleased. There we go. We got it. So just be prepared here. This is probably going to leak fuel. There she goes. That's alright. Okay, now we can disconnect these seven Phillips screws around the outside. Which also have 8mm hex heads. Okay, now I'm just going to pry it up gently. Real gently here. And we're 
going to try to come straight up so that hopefully nothing drops down into the tank. Just come straight up with the whole assembly. Keep in mind this thing's going to want to drip. So we're going to try to keep that from happening in the truck. I'm going to go get a rag. I'll try this again. Here we go again. Straight out. Alright, so here she is on the workbench. Not a whole lot to it, it's unseen. Looks like we just removed these two fuel clamps, a couple wires, make sure it's wired the same as it is now, and uh, stick it back together. So, I guess we'll get to it. Alrighty, well, unfortunately, you guys missed a little bit there, so. So far all I've done, so this little fuel hose was right there in between those two pieces and these two clamps were slid down holding this all together so uh, I guess it shut off and you guys missed that so if you can pull two hose clamps and slide a hose then you can get to here without the video. So once I did that this all comes out of the bottom part of the, uh, the holder there and you can see where we are now. And on the bottom of the pump, this is like a rubber grommet spacer holder thing, so I'm just going to put that slide over there. And at this point we're ready to disconnect these two uh, connectors, the electrical connectors. But we want to make sure that we get them in the same place on this uh, new pump. So don't lose track of which one's which, otherwise your pump will run backwards, or pretty much not run. Okay, so in my case this, uh, which looks like the positive lead, yeah, the positive lead has a 7 millimeter nut on it, and the negative with the ground has a 8 millimeter. If you lose track of which one's which, the uh, positive goes through an insulated post up here, and the negative, the ground just grounds right to the body of the, uh, the holder. Okay, so you can see it's labeled positive, and that one's labeled negative. So you can tell which post is which. Now I'm disconnecting the negative terminal. So now it looks like we're ready to start reassembly. So I want to make this pump look like this. So I need to install the sock and I need to get these caps off of here and then we can move on it looks like. Alright, so to get the sock on here, I'll remove this plug. Technically it's a cap. Okay. Stick this onto here. So now, once we got the sock on, we want to get this serrated washer, put it on that post and just push it down, tap it down, so that that holds the sock on there. I'm going to get a small socket and push that on there. Use my smallest socket. Oop. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay, so we got the sock on there. Now we're just going to get this little cap off of here. Ta-da! Now we're ready to install this back onto the uh, pump here, or the uh, bracket. Don't want to forget this little uh, insulator pad here at the bottom. That allows this all to fit into the holder real nice. A little lock washer and the 8mm nut on the ground. Okay, now we're going to hook up the positive wire to the positive terminal. So we get the lock washer and the nut. Now, since they gave us new clamps, I'm going to put the new fuel clamps on. Figure I might as well. And they gave us a new fuel line as well, so I'm going to cut this fuel line down to size here. Good sharp razor blade will make short work of this. Just line them up and 
chop this new one down. Okay. And we'll just slide it on. I'm looping this up with a little bit of WD-40, but it should make it a little easier to slide this new tighter hose on. Right, we'll get the pump in place. The other end of the hose. Now I just gotta slide this hose back down. It's kind of tight. Now we're uh, nice and tight up against the bottom here, which is good. I did have to loosen this uh, positive connection. So we'll tighten this back up here before I forget. Now I'm just going to slide these hose clamps down, fuel line clamps, get them into position, and we can pull these little uh, cap thingies off that hold them in the open position. There we go. Yeah, now I got the two hose clamps on there. Very good. And with that, we're ready to go back into the tank. Well, there is one thing I want to do. I want to replace this gasket. I think I'll keep this one as a spare. It's a little hard, but it's not like cracking or anything. It's still semi pliable. Here's the old one. There's the new one. Let's smash it all back together. It'll probably be easier if I just put this on here, line up the holes because they're not equally spaced really. And just drop it in until everything lines up. I am going to put a dab of grease on these screws, these seven screws that hold the uh, whole thing down because they were a little squeaky coming out and I don't want them to rust in there forever. vent or return, whatever it is. Slide that clamp over. Slide the clamp over. I'm going to do the same thing with this big fitting here, the main pressure line. Just grease it up a little bit just so that next time this all comes apart, it actually comes apart. Okay. Now I just need to restore the electrical connection and uh, I'm going to leave the cover off. I want to test for leaks, or check for leaks, um, before I put that cover back on, and then uh, it will be good to go. Alrighty, so we're all plugged back in up there, so we're ready to test her out. Alright, so since we had the fuel system open and the pump is dry and the lines have all kind of drained out, it's going to take a while to build up fuel pressure. Um, so we're going to have to kind of hold the key in the start position without pressing the clutch. That runs the fuel pump, and uh, do that for a little while until we build up fuel pressure, check for leaks, give her a start. I should be able to turn this and hear the pump running. I heard it. Alright, let's take a look back there. Keep an eye out back here. Oh, definitely sounds like it got it has a load on it now. See any wetness there, or any drips, or anything? Okay. Well, I guess we can try firing it up and see what happens. Press the clutch. The pump is running. Engine seems to be running smooth, so I guess we got fuel pressure. All right, so I'm satisfied that I've done a leak-free repair. I'm gonna go ahead and put this cover back on. Now, if it's the first time you've had this off, you might want to replace that strip caulk that goes around there. But I've had this off before, so that stuff is fairly new and pliable still. So I'm just going to put it back down with the same stuff. 